A man who told police someone had thrown a rock at his vehicle allegedly said he was driving drunk before he fled and crashed in Moses Lake. T.J. Beatty, a 29-year-old Moses Lake resident, reportedly pulled up to an officer early Sunday morning in the area of North Evelyn Drive. He told the officer someone had thrown a rock at his vehicle. When the officer noticed Beatty was slurring his speech, the officer asked Beatty if he had been drinking. Beatty allegedly said he had drank a lot, and then he drove off. The officer pursued for a short distance when Beatty crashed his vehicle. Beatty allegedly then fled on foot and was arrested shortly after for DUI, driving with a suspended license, eluding, obstruction, and possession of methamphetamine. In Northwest News, Mars Hill Church held its final Sunday services this weekend. The Seattle Mega Church will close its doors on New Year's Day. The church fell on hard times this year due to financial problems and the resignation of its founder, Mark Driscoll. But one Mars Hill pastor says he only has good memories of his time at the church. The release of an Oregon woman from a prison in East Timor was a big Christmas present for her mother. But as Lyle Aaron reports, her mom won't rest easy until her daughter is home. Bernadette Kiro got a call from a lawyer on Christmas Eve that her daughter Stacy Addison was being released from prison. She was able to call me on his cell phone and, you know, uh, of course I was crying, you know, happy and just really good to hear her voice. Addison was arrested over two months ago when a fellow passenger in a cab was found with methamphetamine. While that passenger has said Addison wasn't involved, Addison's been behind bars until yesterday. She, I, of course, was happy and to be out of there, but uh, just kind of in shock. But Addison can't leave Timur until she gets her passport back. And I've also heard that they can keep her for the trial. Carol is still cat-sitting for her daughter, and while Addison's release made for a Merry Christmas, Carol is still hoping for an even happier New Year. That she can have that passport in her hand, get on a plane, and, you know, come home. In Klamath Falls, this is Lyle Aaron's NBC2 News. A woman is reunited with her first car, a 1967 Mustang, 28 years after it was stolen. Mariana Hicks has the story. Oh. It's absolutely amazing. The license plates to Linda Allsip's 1967 Mustang are finally being put on after 28 years. That's because someone stole her car less than a year after she bought it. Kept my plates. I never, I don't want to say I gave up hope, but I did give up hope. It was just a wonderful memento to have from having your first car, but you know, now actually having my first car back, it's, it's a phenomenal feeling. No one knows exactly where the car has been since 1986. All we know is someone bought the classic. When a California Highway Patrol trooper was performing VIN inspections on it, he noticed something wasn't right and his gear started shifting. The officer, through uh, his due diligence, a lot of investigation, uh, was able to uh, verify that uh, it was stolen, even though a lot of the uh, paperwork and everything had been lost or had been uh, purged through the system. The fine revved up memories in Linda's mind, memories of her late father. He taught me how to change the oil in vehicles on this car. Um, he's no longer with us, so it's, uh, it's very bittersweet. Also bittersweet, the fact it was CHP who recovered the car, the same agency who gave her her first ticket in her very first car. It's like winning the lottery. It just, I mean, it happens to some people, but very few and far between. And for it to happen to me is just an amazing feeling. And that's going to do it for us here at i Fiber one News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.